everybody. We've come to the final installment in our Tuesday Touch series entitled Nativity. This is Pastor B, and hey, I'm at the manger. During this series, we've been looking at people who were at the nativity or the birth site of Jesus, and we've looked at the shepherds, and we looked at Joseph on Christmas Eve. We looked at Mary and saw how she encourages us with her life to say yes to God and to endure. And if you say yes and endure, you will find purpose and fulfillment in your life. And today we look at Jesus himself. In nativity scenes, you see the baby Jesus sleeping quietly as babies should, wrapped in swaddling clothes and probably being nurtured and caressed and fed by Mary. And we sing songs that depict the night like this, right? Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you were. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. We sing those songs. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. We sing those songs, and they're good, but the reality is that the nativity of Jesus was not simply a peaceful moment. It was God's declaration of war. In coming in Jesus, God was declaring war against Satan. God was declaring war against the flesh. God was declaring war against all evil, all sin, all injustice, anything that stood in God's way. God was declaring war. God came down here to declare war in Jesus. When I was a little boy, um, my bedroom was at the back of the house. And so my father was a, a loud talker, right? And so what he would generally do, if he was up toward the front and I was in the back, he would, he would yell my name, Brian, come here. Brian, bring me so-and-so. Brian, come, I need to tell you something. And if after a couple times I did not move, well, you know what he did, right? He would get up and come down the hall to see what I was doing. And whatever I was doing, when he had to come down there, had to stop. Mama was the same way. She wasn't no pushover. The same thing happened on Christmas. On Christmas... God had, was done yelling at us. God had yelled God's will through the Ten Commandments and the law. God had yelled God's will for us through the prophets. God had yelled God's will for us and what God wanted from us through the judges and through some of the kings. But after a while, because we weren't responding, God decided to get up from eternity, to come down through the, the canal of time, and to come through 42 generations to come and, and be with us. And look us in the eye. So Christmas, in the midst of the sweet little baby Jesus moment, was God declaring war. No longer would God speak from a distance. God came here. And when God came here in Christ, he came to do business. He took care of sin once and for all. And he showed us what a life devoted to God would look like. And he looked Satan in the eye. Twice, three times if you count it. One time in the garden when he was tempted, in the desert when he was tempted. Another time in the garden of Gethsemane when his flesh wanted to get out of it. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And on the cross when he stayed up there, he defeated the flesh. He defeated the enemy. He defeated it all. So God coming here was a declaration of war. And we need that. Now, some of us would rather, you know, have the sweet little Jesus boy than to think about God at war with us sometimes, God at war with the sin of the world. But we need more brothers and sisters than a sweet little Jesus child. A preacher in Philadelphia uh, was preaching a sermon after worship was over. A man came to him and said, you know, Reverend, I have a problem with what you just preached and said, well, what's your problem? The preacher said, what's your problem? The man said, well, I, um, I don't really like it when, when preachers give too much to the cross and too much to his blood and too much 
to that stuff. It's just too much. We live in a world full of violence. We don't need to reinforce that. He said, well, how do you think I ought to present Jesus then, since you don't really care for the cross? You need to present him as an example for our lives. Present him as a teacher. And so the preacher said, okay, that sounds good. So if I presented Jesus as the example, would you follow his example? He said, yes, I do every day. He says, you sure? He says, yeah. I said, all right. Well, let's start right now. Jesus is the prime example, yes? He said, yes, okay. Well, the example that Jesus left to us was a life without sin. Can you live that life? The man looked puzzled and said, well, no. I can't live a sinless life. And the preacher folded his arms and said, well, sir, look like to me, you need more than a teacher and an example. You need a savior. And on Christmas, lying in that manger, in the midst of all that made that night what it was, was not just a growing teacher, but a savior who was coming to declare war and win against all that was wrong. Merry Christmas, kids. God bless you. This is Pastor B, Tuesday's Touch. You have been touched from St. James Presbyterian Church on the lovely James Island, Charleston, South Carolina. Be blessed.